President Biden promises consequences for the Saudis. Of course, we know that OPEC plus decided to cut production of oil. Joe Biden really needs that oil. He hates to admit it, but he needs it bad because they have elections to win in the United States. And when he was on having a conversation with CNN and Jake Tapper, he told Jake, he said, listen, there will be penalties for them. And he says, I'm a tough guy and everybody knows that you don't F with a Biden. But here is Joe, the president, confirming that there will be consequences for those Saudis because nobody Fs with a Biden. But, but we should, we should, and I am uh, in the process when the, when the uh, uh, this House and Senate gets back, there's, they're going to have to, uh, there's going to be some consequences for what they've done. What kind of Russia. consequences? What kind of consequences? Menendez says suspend all arms sales. Is that something you'd consider? I'm not going to get into what I'd consider of course. and what I have in mind, but there will be, there will be consequences. The midterm. There will be consequences, but I don't want to talk about them, probably because I don't really know what I'm supposed to say after that. I've got this note card on my lap, but it only has the bullet points. That's a detailed question, so I can't talk about that right now. Jake, I'm not prepared to answer that question, but certainly that begs the question, what kind of consequences are we talking about? Because we already have what could lead to World War III blossoming over there between Russia and Ukraine. We have a lot of other problems around the world. Do we need to get another global conflict roiled up over there in the Middle East? Probably not a good idea. Some people were wondering if Joe Biden knows what he's saying. He's got flashcards and he dropped them. The president was being interviewed by Jake Tapper. And as usual, he doesn't often know what to say or when to say it or how to say it. And he keeps note cards handy. Unfortunately, he dropped them. And the very, very helpful Jake Tapper picked them up and said, here you go, Mr. President. We, we, we passed so much legislation that significantly makes a, makes a point about, you know, for example, the American mm. Rescue Plan, the, <laughs> the legislation to deal with inflation, um, the, the Inflation Act. We Yikes. OK, so he drops the card. Then we get a big stumble, doesn't know what he's saying. So they all just tried to paper over that one, just gloss over it. Just here, let me just, you know, like when the thing falls in the movies and somebody just pu puts their foot over the thing. Oh, they didn't, they didn't see that. Just put your foot over it. Kind of one of those situations. But the president obviously needs those cards. Very, very important in order for him to make it through an interview without getting us involved in another war. While people wonder what the president was thinking or saying, some people thought, no, he didn't mean what he said. He didn't actually intend to say that there were consequences for the Saudis. Obviously, we don't want to get involved in another global conflict. So maybe he was just confused because he's often confused. And he did, in fact, drop his note cards. So Biden, after the interview with CNN, comes back out and he gets a confirmation question from the media. Mr. President, did you mean what you said? Are you serious? You're really going to go and impose consequences on the Saudis? Because they kind of have you between a rock and a hard place, don't you? We're going to react to Saudi Arabia and they're going to consultation when they come back and uh, we will take that. This is a he slowly starts to back away again. It gets loud. He's about to do it, but they told him not to do it. He says that we are going to be imposing consequences on the Saudis. Yes, I meant what I said. Why are you asking me again about it? It's obvious what we're going to be doing. So we'll see what that looks like. Apparently, when the Saudis come back, Joe Biden is going to have a big plan for them, and we're going to see what that entails. Probably not going to be good for any of us. Senator Tom Cotton, very unhappy with the Biden administration and what they've done with energy and how they are responding to the energy crisis around the world. Here's Senator Cotton saying that Biden has begged the Saudis for additional oil and really asked them wholeheartedly to wait until after the elections because this is about politics more than it is about solving an ongoing energy crisis in the United States. 
is the Democrats will do anything to try to keep gas from increasing before the election. But remember, he didn't ask the Saudis not to cut production. He only asked them to wait for a month until after the election because it's the official stated policy of Joe Biden on the campaign trail and since he's been in office to do everything he can to hurt fossil fuel production everything. here and around the world, which is driving up energy prices. There's two simple reasons for what's happened uh, with this OPEC decision and our relationship with Saudi Arabia and our dependency, increasing dependency on foreign oil again. One, Joe Biden has waged a war on American oil production. If we would just produce more here, we wouldn't have to depend on anyone overseas. But two, Joe Biden and Barack Obama and the Democratic Party have waged a campaign to ostracize and marginalize and alienate Saudi Arabia going back 13 years by coddling Iran and appeasing our mortal enemy. You know, Ronald Reagan in the 1980s was able to enlist Saudi Arabia to keep oil prices low, which devastated Soviet Russia's economy. Why can't Joe Biden do that with the Saudis to Putin's Russia? It's because they've waged this campaign against our longtime friend, Saudi Arabia, in favor of our longtime adversary, Iran. That's exactly the kind of short-sighted foreign policy that I explain in Only the Strong. They have no idea what they're doing. All they want is clean, green energy. That's all they care about. They don't care about geopolitics or oil or about offending different regimes or the international complexities of alliances and enemy states. They don't care about any of that. If it's green energy and it reduces the carbon emissions on the planet, they don't care. Doesn't matter if it's going to lead to World War III or whatever, as long as the windmills just keep on turning. All right. So Tom Cotton, I think, hits that one on the head. He is explaining that the Biden administration just is out there, apparently, for talking points until they really need something. And then they go over there and they beg them, can you please just wait? Meanwhile, in the United States, Americans suffer as the elections near. Ted Cruz is also jumping in on this. Senator Ted Cruz is hitting Joe Biden, calling him weak, saying the world doesn't even respect him. We used to be in a position of power where the United States leadership was respected. And after the U.S. started to fall, after the crumbling initiated after Afghanistan, world leaders took notice and they started to have their doubts about American strength. And it all started with Joe. Uh, that Joe Biden is the worst foreign policy and national security president this nation has ever had. True. That Joe Biden is so fundamentally weak. You know, you can trace a lot of this back to, to a year ago when Biden surrendered to the Taliban, yeah. left Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan. And what happened, every enemy of America across the globe, they looked to the Oval Office and they took the measure of the man in the Oval Office. And yeah. tragically... They concluded the commander in chief was weak and feckless and ineffective. And, and what, what the left doesn't understand is weakness is provocative, that when bullies and tyrants, when Iran and China and Russia and North Korea see a weak and scared president, mm. it makes them more aggressive. It makes Putin invade Ukraine. It makes China think about invading Taiwan. The way to defend America, the way to avoid Armageddon, which Joe Biden's weakness, I agree, it's increasing the chance of disaster. The way to avoid it is the way Ronald Reagan did, through peace, through strength. It's the way Donald Trump did, mm. through peace, through strength, that when America is strong, when we support our military, when we stand up to our enemies, the bad guys don't want to mess with us. And, and when you behave like a scared sixth grade girl, which is how Joe Biden behaves, True. you know what? The True. bullies see that and they behave accordingly and it makes the world a whole lot more dangerous. Yeah. There's good argument that none of this would have happened between Russia and Ukraine. I mean, it didn't happen back when Trump was in charge. Why did it happen pretty much coincidentally right after Afghanistan? The United States looks weak and ineffective, got run out of there like a like like Ted Cruz said, a bunch of little girls because of the administration's incompetence to manage that withdrawal. And we have dead troops and then they took out a family, you know, in a caravan. The whole thing was botched. To a massive degree, Putin's watching that, says, well, man, those guys are idiots. This is a great time. They're not going to do anything. And turns out maybe he's right. 
Ted Cruz blasting the Biden administration, calling him weak, of course, as we all know. Another very interesting clip came out. Many people concerned about an impending economic recession, catastrophic doom for the United States economy. Jake Tapper asked the president about this during an extended interview, said, hey, Mr. President, the economy is a pretty important issue. We know you talk about green energy and abortion and all of the other issues that nobody cares about, but we have to talk about the economy because it doesn't look so hot out there for you. Do you think we're in a recession? What are you doing to navigate this country through the storm? Midterm elections are four weeks from today. The economy remains top, top of mind for voters. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO said the U.S. is likely to enter a recession in the next nine months. Bank of America says the U.S. could start losing 175,000 jobs a month. Yikes. Gas prices are on the rise again. True. Should the American people prepare for a recession? No. Yes. Look, they've been saying this now how uh, every, every six months they say this. Every six months they look down the next six months and see what's going to happen. Two consecutive quarters. It hadn't quarters. happened yet. It hadn't been, there, there has, there is no, there's no guarantee that they're going to be, I don't think there will be a recession. If there is, right. it'll be a very slight recession. Ah. That is, we'll move down slightly. Ah. We'll, look, think about what's <laughs> happened. We have done more, we're in a better position than any other major country in the world, economically and politically. We are, we still have real problems. But we, That's look, true. Look, look, what look what we got done. We, 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 we passed so much legislation that uh -oh, significantly uh -oh, there it is. Makes, uh -oh. a, makes a point about, you know, for example, the American Rescue Plan, the, the legislation to deal with inflation. Um, Has a difficult time with that question, but a very interesting point from the president that we are doing great. The United States is going to navigate its way through this, but there might be a slight recession. We saw a big moment of outrage. Hold on a minute. There's not going to be a recession. They keep saying this every six months. And we're not going to come out. Don't worry about it, Jake. But there might be a slight one, just so you know. Just so you know, it could, in fact, be a little bit tight when push comes to shove. Now, the reason, according to the president, why we're not going to be in a recession is because he's got all sorts of solutions already underway. The president says, don't worry about a recession. The United States is in good shape. We don't have to worry about inflation or economic catastrophe. Why? Because we've spent another several hundred billion dollars on green energy. We passed the, look, what I ran on, I said, we're going to deal with energy. Right. And, and the energy problem, we're going to deal with the whole notion of global warming. Yeah. We passed $368 billion worth of help which, as the same so? bankers talk about, is going to bring a billion, a trillion, seven hundred million dollar, billion dollars off the sidelines of investment. What? A billion, million, trillion dollars of investment off the sideline. We just passed four hundred billion dollars of help. Whatever that means, he doesn't even know. It doesn't even matter. It's just money they just dump on the fire because who cares? And that's going to be enough apparently to bring in several hundred million, trillion, billion, whatever. It doesn't matter. Who cares about the details? It's just the money printer, just going burr until it all comes out. Doesn't matter where it goes or what it's for, as long as it's green. That's the president's plan to spend millions, trillions, billions, whatever on the economy. And that's going to save us all from a collapse. Kareen Jean-Pierre was asked about the president's comments. He said, yeah, maybe a slight recession, just a little one, maybe a little bit, you know, we'll see. But she said, he is walking that back a little bit. And he doesn't really think that's likely. Um, and then yesterday we had the president saying that um, in his interview with Jake Tapper, I think that if there's going to be a recession, it'll be a small one, which I think is a change from what he said Just previously, a which he thinks there's not, which he said there wasn't going to be a recession. So are you changing, are you preparing, you know, for job losses? I mean, how, what's, is the posture changing on the economy based on what we're expecting? So it went from just a, a, a 0% chance of recession into a slight recession. See that modification? No, no, no. To now, well, maybe. What are you doing about that? What are you seeing? Are you doing anything to prepare? Because when recessions hit, there's a lot of problems that hit all of America. I think the one part of your question first, um, so, which is what the president said last night on uh, during his interviews. Look, the president has been pretty um, consistent. 
has said multiple times in the past, while a recession is possible, he does not think there will be a recession. Does not think there will be one, but while it is possible, maybe unlikely. And so again, dude, we're just sort of mincing words here. The president says one thing, the White House comes out and says another. The president says, well, maybe a slight recession. KJP says, well, he always said it's a possibility, but he still thinks it's not going to be one. Janet Yellen, the Secretary Treasury, is saying the United States is in perfectly good shape. There's no economy problem. There's no inflation problem. We're not worried about a recession. Very simply, the United States is doing just fine. Um, we still see the impact of uh, COVID in China and the slowdown in Chinese growth. And um, with high inflation and tightening monetary policy in many advanced countries, um, emerging markets from really all of these factors are suffering um, many stresses. So there's a lot to talk about. But from the perspective of the United about, States, yeah. I think the United States is doing very well. Very well. So there's, uh, I, I guess it's the same story that we've had for the last several years. We're still, we're good. It's transitory, baby. It's all going to be fine. Don't worry about it. These people are so unplugged. They have no idea um, what I guess the rest of us are seeing out there in the world. Janet Yellen says that everything is just fine. Steady as she goes. Nothing to worry about. Senator Josh Howley was beating up the Biden administration at the Senate hearing involving the Judiciary Committee. This is Chris Cox, a representative from Facebook, and he gets asked about the collusion between Facebook and the Biden administration when it comes to censoring Americans. Apparently, they did a lot of it. Josh Hawley has some questions. We would help them get accurate information about COVID during the unprecedented time, especially at the beginning. Well, isn't there a difference between you as a platform putting forward information and censoring your users at the behest of the White House, the administration more broadly, and the CDC? Is Two different issues he's talking about. He's saying, hey, if Facebook decides we have a message that we want to publish, you guys can go ahead and do that. That's one category. Facebook could just say, oh, we're concerned about COVID and we think that COVID uh, messages are, are appropriate, right? Facebook can do that is what Josh Howley's saying. Yeah, that's a separate category, but we're talking about something different where it sounds like the White House was telling you what to say and you were communicating with the White House about what to say. And that makes it seem like there is government acting happening which is not lawful. The government is not supposed to outsource its censorship, its limitations on your constitutional rights to private third parties. If it's a state actor that's acting as a private entity, it's really the government that's sort of usurping the private entity and you can't allow the government to do that. So Holly's asking about this. He says, hey, what about this other bucket where you were literally colluding with the White House? Isn't there a distinction there? We specifically... Uh wanted to work with public health experts to understand the relationship between information mm. and behavior. And so we did consult with the CDC, the World Health Organization, and others uh, to understand how the, the platform policies we built were affecting public health. Well, you didn't, just, you didn't just consult with them to understand how they affected public health. You actually censored on their behalf. I mean, you, you took these emails. I'm just quoting from a sample of them, which, by the way, have been disclosed in litigation. These, these emails show that you took censorship steps, you took down accounts, you planned misinformation policies, you adjusted your policies at the behest of the United States government. I mean, that, Taking that's not orders. Just some theoretical thing. That's actually targeting your user's speech. But you're, you're, I appreciate your forthrightness, by the way. Yeah, thanks so, for being but honest. But you're saying that, that was, you think that's fine and that was your policy. Senator, we... We've been public about our policies on COVID misinformation specifically, as well as on misinformation generally. And so you think there's not, you're not concerned about any of this? Nothing that I just read to you, you're not concerned about it at all? Respectfully, Senator, I think the balance of how to protect free expression as well as public safety is a difficult issue. But it's one uh, we're committed to working with outside experts and publishing our work. Well, uh, <laughs> um, I, I appreciate you being so forthright. As I said, this is actually from litigation between the state of Missouri and the state of Louisiana and the federal government. I, I anticipate that your remarks under oath today are going to be very interesting and helpful to that litigation. I'll just say this. My view is, is that the United States government is bound by the First Amendment. They cannot encourage 
or coerce or incite or collude with a private party to get around the First Amendment. But you just said to me today that that's basically what they did. Yes. That you coordinated with them repeatedly over a pattern of months and years. Censorship. To adjust and target your speech policies for protected speech at the behest of the United States. At the Biden administration's request. Shut everybody up who's challenging our narrative. We can't do that. The Biden administration is not capable of going and just making that decision and just sort of encouraging or demanding that the big tech platforms do any of this. So instead, they have to send it over to Facebook, send the FBI over there. This is misinformation. Hunter Biden, this, that, and the other. And same goes for COVID and every other narrative that they wanted to take full advantage of to further their political ends. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about the science. They don't care about honesty or integrity or democracy or any of that crap. They care about winning and they're going to use the tools at their disposal that they have available to do it. And so that was Howley taking it to the Biden administration. While the country continues to collapse, the border is broken. While inflation runs rampant, the people in the White House, Joe Biden and his wife, Dr. Jill, They took very critical time out of their days to wish a happy birthday to The View, to Joy Whatever. What? Some famous friends and well-wishers are sending their their best to you, like this cat, who's a pain in the butt, but what can we do? We we talk about him all the time. It's it's, it's embarrassing. Go ahead, just show the clip, please. Who is it? From the whole Biden family, happy birthday, Joy. No one is better named than you. You brought joy to so many of your friends and admirers with your trademark humor and that smile that lights up the room. What is and she as talking a about? Teacher, I know that there are so many students out there whose lives you've changed. Very interesting language from her. A joy, you bring joy. What a very clever, very clever expression from the doctor. I'm sure that Joy Behar never saw, never heard that before. So uh, I guess happy birthday to Joy from the White House.